Okay, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster back here on this wonderful weekend, Saturday. Hopefully everyone's enjoying the weekend out there. Some pleasant weather out here along the West Coast, at least in Northern California. Uh, it is about 12.21 p.m. here. November 4th, 2023 is the date. Latest activity looks like a very small earthquake in the, uh, Southern California. It's going to be a little 0.9 earthquake. Uh, we'll get to the rest of the globe here in just a little bit, but I first want to cover uh, the potential here for some G1, maybe up to G2 solar activity coming up here beginning tomorrow. Uh, this is related to a coronal hole, a coronal mass ejection, uh, also associated with this filament eruption that uh, happened yesterday. So we're looking at the uh, arrival of a couple different systems here that the sun has shot off. Here's one of the latest uh, images here shows the direct impact towards the earth area. And it looks like we could get uh, a pretty good size hit there. Nothing major, but uh, we are forecasting, uh, looks like maybe up to a G-Storm uh, category on, uh, looks like the 5th to the 6th time frame. <clears throat> now this is going to be a little forecast here. This is what the Space Weather Prediction Center puts out in terms of the potential for the auroras. Right now, tonight, not looking at anything major going on as um, far as the intensity goes, but tomorrow, that's when we're expected the brunt. Tomorrow night, we're expected the brunt of the activity to stir up and kick in. And this is going to be the visible view line as far as the horizon view goes. So if you're looking north from this line, should be able to see it pending Everything works out as forecasted, but it uh, looks like a good possibility of uh, auroras there tomorrow night from a lot of the northern tier states. Uh, just have to look towards the uh, north there, and you should should see some auroras. We'll see how it goes. And, of course, report back on this uh, for the um, update tomorrow. We'll take a look at the fork a little bit later. Uh, we'll look at the more of a detailed forecast here. All right, uh, let's see what we got. Right now, there is a little bit of auroras coming in. Uh, looks like this may be some uh, pre-arrival solar activity. Noticing uh, some KP index up here on this uh, chart showing up around the four level. Getting an increase here in the aurora uh, concentration on the dark side of the Earth. Well, where people are sleeping. So... Uh, We'll watch this tonight, but I think the big show could be tomorrow as we uh, get the arrival of that uh, CME and also that uh, filament eruption that kicked up there yesterday. Should be active here the next couple days. It uh, doesn't look like they've updated this map here in terms of the three-day geomagnetic forecast, but as you can see here, a G1, G2 magnetic storm watch is valid for these dates here, the 5th through the 6th and again it is expected to arrive late on November 5th UTC time we're not quite in the 5th that's coming up here in a, a couple hours I believe UTC time is 1913 so tomorrow night maybe uh, early evening time period this should be kicking in all right <clears throat> let's get back to the uh, activity here check out see what else is going on in terms of sunspot activity well we do have a couple regional sunspots here that are uh well they're they're just there there's not a whole lot of complexity within this um, little bit this uh sunspot region down here in the southern hemisphere of the the sun but we're still watching this area uh, showing a little bit of complexity here within these magnetic cores of that sunspot region that may pose some damage or hazard uh, in terms of solar flare activity uh, in the coming days get a little bit better view of it hopefully it amplifies some i'd like to see the auroras kick up uh, and we're supposed to be heading into solar maximum here they've changed that from uh, 2025 to early uh, 2024 so next year sometime between january and october of next year is supposed to peak out so we'll continue to watch that overall threat right now 90 percent chance for a c flare m flare at 40 X flare remains at about 5% chance. Uh, but over the past two days, we really haven't seen any uh, uptick here. Just a little bit of C flare activity going on. 
as you can see there on the X-ray flux chart. But we'll continue to watch that with a little bit of complexity there in the core of 3480 and 3477. This sunspot region over here, well, it's just about off the visible disk here, off on the western limb of the sun, so not really much of a concern. All right, earthquake activity. Let's see what's going on here. I uh, bring up the latest information here from the USGS, which I believe uh, earthquakes have been updated. There we go. Have we seen anything overnight in terms of large-scale movement? Well, looks like the largest one's going to be a 5.0 here in the Mariana Islands region, about 10 kilometers deep right along the plate boundary. Uh, that is the largest one here in the last 24 hours. So it doesn't look like uh, we've seen anything major kicking up here overnight. Go ahead and check out the west coast. We did see that four-pointer out here yesterday. As far as any new movement goes here along northern California or the west coast in general, uh, well, I would say not a whole lot. Uh, latest 2.5 map and above does show, uh, looks like one earthquake today uh, above the 2.5 threshold, but that's going to be way up in Idaho. 2.6. So actually, it looks like it's on the uh, yeah, it's Montana side, close to Montana. It looks like, or along the border. Not a whole lot going on for the rest of the country. A lot of this activity from yesterday. We did see some movement kicking up into Kansas and uh, Texas. We've got one earthquake right now in the Oklahoma area. 1.9 coming in within the last hour. New Madrid seismic zone. Pretty quiet for now. A uh, quick glance at the Yellowstone overviews. Let me check this out here real quick, see what we have. Looks like that's going to be the uh, 2.6 from earlier this morning there in Idaho or Montana. Uh, since then, we've seen a couple small spikes here across the Yellowstone seismograph stations, but there's not a whole lot going on. All right, uh, what else we got across the Middle America Trench? Fairly quiet for the most part, but uh, see what we got for smaller activity. Some threes and fours up and down the board today. Looks like maybe a 5.0 here into the Columbia area, but the USGS reporting this as a 4.6. So a little bit of a downgrade. It's just been the trend here recently with the USGS um, really knocking down those magnitudes. Uh, South America region looks fairly quiet. I know there's a handful of earthquakes here, some twos and threes, but overall, this is generally quiet for this area. Uh, along the Tonga Trench, Kermadec Trench area, seen the pancake of activity down here. Quite a few uh, fours kicking off. Let's go check that out. Not a whole lot showing up here on the USGS map. In fact, all of this here is from, uh, well, actually, yeah, we got two, two more deep earthquakes. We've been having actually a pretty good amount of deeper movement quakes here in the area in the last few days uh, with about 18 earthquakes of various magnitudes within this plate boundary and most of these are all deep, uh, including that super deep one there back on the 31st. Uh, so watch for some broader scale movement here, I think. Deeper activity does tend to stress the regions around the plate boundary. Keep an eye here on the Solomon Islands westward. Uh, for some further movement. New Zealand area not showing a whole lot on the USGS map, but last night, yesterday, we did see some threes down there across the North and South Island area. Uh, movement up into Alaska looks like a 1.4 currently as we speak. Some older movement quakes there from yesterday uh, across areas of the Middle East and the Mediterranean regions. Uh, looks like... Uh, See if we've got any further activity here across the Nepal region. Looks like we did see uh, another earthquake there in Nepal. This is going to be a little aftershock from yesterday's. Uh, well, USGS says it's a 5.6. The other models are showing like a 6.2 and even higher, but uh, looks like a little bit of activity. Um, yesterday afternoon far as aftershock movement goes in that area not a whole lot going on through the rest of the area unless you look at the smaller quakes and even then uh doesn't look well it looks like there's a little 4.8 over here around iran area uh, that looks pretty recent 
uh, but for the most part across the Mediterranean just seen some very small quakes here today nothing really showing up here in Iceland of course uh, still kind of watching that for the uh, latest data um, and the current condition far as that uh, volcano area goes I believe we're still at a yellow down here around the Rick James area that is the uh, current color code there for this volcano all right anything else going on here across the region nothing major going on um there was a little uptick here across one of the volcanoes uh, i believe it's going to be this one right here the shishaldin volcano in the aleutian trench uh, that showed a little bit of uptick here recently beautiful cone volcano i mean that's almost picture perfect uh, this area was kicking up some uh, eruptive status here. This Let me see what we got here from yesterday. Ash emissions have ended or paused, it looks like. But it did kick up here. They raised the rates, released the color codes from yellow back up to an orange after only being at uh, the yellow level for a couple days. So it looks like they're going to continue to keep that on the orange status alert level watch for the uh, Shishaldin volcano because of uh, some recent ash emissions uh, but we'll continue to check on that and see if uh, see if anything changes looks like they're still having some ongoing seismic trimmer though which is obviously a sign of some uh, magma on the move there at that uh, volcano as far as the Hawaii area goes uh, still seeing a little well let's see here I believe these are from yesterday had a pretty good swarm of activity up here yesterday doesn't look like anything today and far as the Kilauea volcano area not a whole lot showing up here for now that's uh, just been the pattern ups and downs in terms of inflation and earthquake activity we'll go ahead and check out the latest inflation data here uh, on the Kilauea vol volcano see how we're holding out looks like uh, pretty steady right now this here is the past uh, two days graph. So almost the past 24 hours has been uh, holding pretty steady. We still are over uh, at the, well, we're still kind of inflated here in terms of the past 30 days. I mean, it, we're up there, but not, not quite as high as the past um, couple different levels here on the graph where it was somewhat elevated. But uh, we'll continue to watch that. These... Uh, intrusions of magma come and go they level out it's got a lot to do with what's going on underneath the pacific plate folks uh, with with over this hot spot uh, storm prediction center here today looks like maybe some thunderstorm activity across the oregon area uh, but overall threat is very minimal for anything considered severe not a whole lot expected and that's going to be the forecast there for the next couple days We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on, folks. Um, a look at the live seismograph stations here show uh, pretty quiet conditions. Not a whole lot going on currently as we speak. Have a safe day and enjoy your weekend. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight, Saturday night. See if we can't get Missy Mimi's on here to join us for a, for a little fun. Take care, folks.